a wastewater treatment plant operator uh, has uh, some things here, some things going on at the water treatment plant. I emailed everybody some things that were costs and some problems he was having. I'd like to have him explain those with Alyssa and just bring you guys up to date because he has to leave the meeting here shortly for another meeting. So, Sean, if you could get on, please, and uh, address the board. Okay, hello, Mayor. Hello, Board of Trustees. Good evening. Sean. Um, I don't know where you want me to start. Um, there's, If you want me to talk about the uh, the water line break that affected the plant operation? Yes. Okay, so that water line break you had in Fredonia on Central Avenue last week, um, the, um, the spoil, if you want to call it that, that, being pumped off the site out of the hole that they were digging, somehow found its way to the wastewater plant. So when I came in that morning, it was raining, so you kind of figure, yeah, the rains, you, you do see a different effluent or influent coming in. But this was atypical. It was light brown. Usually you get a darker gray influent. And I was able to see that light brown in the final clarifiers and the filter beds were kind of dirty too. So um, the following days after that break, uh, we found that the solids had went up considerable in the aeration tanks, about 20,000 pounds worth. I'm not saying that all of it's the soil that got into the system, it, uh, maybe 15 um we're having problems with uh with um thickening the sludge and storing it before we waste it in into the into the centrifuge so we're having problems operationally the um, lab results coming from our lab is showing that it's got a fast settling sludge and you really don't want that if you can help it you want a slower medium type settling sludge that would take everything out of suspension and give you a better effluent final effluent but um so right now what that soil does it just makes everything settle so fast and and that when that happens you can't get it to thicken with the polymer and remove it so we're, we're working through that we're trying to get you know get get better the the numbers are looking better but it's a slow process um the uh, composite sample that was taken on that day, we're waiting on the lab. Usually the lab takes a week, week and a half to get, get the results from them. The uh, final effluent sample. Um, the uh, construction project, we're looking at the belt presses, a startup date of November 9th, which is really, really good. Um, excited about that, that can't come any sooner. The uh, screw pump uh, work is almost finished. The guys were there. They put the new gearbox in motor. Well, it's not new, the refurbished gearbox in motor. They still got to button it up on Wednesday. The, there's a conduit cover that's missing off the motor. So we're going to have to find that and get that slapped on there so the electrical connection's uh, safe. Um, Get into the sanitary sewer. That was my exact question. How how, how is rainwater, drain water getting into a sanitary? I mean, how if the guys are pumping that out, how is it getting through the san the, the that drain into the sanitary? Tony, if you're on here, will you please? Uh, you, I spoke to you earlier in the week, and you you had some answers to that. If you wouldn't mind enlightening everybody, please. Yes, once we opened the road cut and chased the water leak, uh, Central Avenue in the southbound lane was totally undermined by the leak that didn't surface till that morning, Sean. Yeah. And it had totally undermined. It was blowing up the southbound lane to Central Avenue. And then right where the sidewalk there on the west side of central butts up to where the water break was it had undermined that whole curb line under the sidewalk and there's a manhole right in that sidewalk 
That manhole is 114, 115 years old. It's all brick laid back in the original construction and when that happened. And water wasn't being pumped into anything. Water from the water break that was blowing under the road and under the sidewalk got through into the uh, probably the older mix mortar or whatever in between the bricks and that's where it was coming from Sean as I told you okay somewhat makes sense all right thank you Tony all right Sean okay I so Sean what's the fix is there anything that needs to be done is it has it corrected itself are you pleased with where we're at now or what's the what uh needs to happen well the process is you know it's biological so it's going to take a while sure you know and like i said we're getting there the testing that we're doing you know the daily tests that we do are is showing improvement um you know it's just a wait and see you know as soon as we get ahead on the solids and we develop a, a better a better sludge settling sludge and like I said, it's biological, so it takes time. So there isn't anything we can do to help you? Not, no, no, but I, I thank you for that. If I might add, uh, Eva, we, that day that we got the leak repaired, we had to cut an eight-foot section of water made out. Wow. And put two HIMAX clamps in. Once we got that resolved, then I had to, bring in flowable fill because you can't backfill under an existing six foot wide sidewalk with a backhoe and gravel and trying to get underneath the sidewalk to support it. And to support that uh, old uh, brick structure doghouse, we call them manholes. So, so we had to go through 20 yards of flowable fill, which is an aggregate mix of sand, water, and concrete which fills in all the voids under the areas that are unreachable by machinery or manpower. So, and so then after that, just a backfill under the part of Central Avenue that was undermined. It was seven feet deep out into the road in the southbound lane, even into the northbound lane from Fredonia to Dunkirk. We put 200 ton of gravel in there and millings in crushed concrete on top. That was a blown line that was leaking probably for three or four days. It never showed its face until the morning we got called by the police. So that flowable fill, Tony, that, that then uh, sealed off any access to that manhole so no water can go, then go through there to, to leach in anymore? The manhole, the manhole is now essentially repaired. Base, which what you're saying is, is it sealed it up, so that even though even though there's, I just don't want any other water to get in there. Not not from the leak because I see the leak is repaired, but any other way, so that manhole has now been sealed up. Uh, I'll tell you what, Jim. With all the material that we had to pump in there, two truckloads of flowable fill concrete, ten yards each. That was like it's like a liquid grout. Yeah, I know what that is. Uh -huh. Yep. So no, there should be nothing ever getting in that one again. Good. That's that's. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Are there any other? And I might add, if I may, please. Um, I won't be verbose, but that project, that repair, is going to be covered under chips because that is a water slash road reconstruction project under an emergency. Great. Good. Good. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Is there any other questions or comments from the trustees? No. Yeah. Just want to have, uh, um, at the last meeting for Tony, um, I was told that the university was flushing hydrants, and it seems now that we've had three or four leaks right around the, the college. I guess my question is, is that normal that they flush the hydrants? I guess I'm wondering why they're doing it and not uh, your guys. And I'm just, because I'm I guess the question that is on some people's mind is, are they doing it correctly or is what they're doing causing some of these breaks? Well, I must tell you honestly, and Chris will back me up with this as well. 
all the people in my department, and I've spoken to all the college people many times prior to and before. It's their responsibility. Those are private hydrants. But we've requested many times prior, if and when you're going to do it, even during the boil water order, we told them, do not flush any hydrants until you contact Chris or I because of the, uh, the unstable situations we had going on in our distribution system. And then I found out subsequently, and I'm not trying to upset the college, but we found out after the break at the Brigham Road Apartments, which was huge in a 12-inch line, and two other breaks since then, which have been keeping us all really, really busy, it was because they did, somebody over there was flushed in hydrants without calling us, and that cannot be acceptable. While you're on, Tony, I have another question. I, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to bring this up yet, but um, so I was looking to look further into it first, but I, so while, while we're on the subject um, of water main breaks because of other issues, um, on Route 60 at the um, concrete plant, Hanson Concrete Plant, uh, they've connected the uh, fire hose to the, to the fire hydrant where there's a, there, I guess apparently there is a meter. But for some reason, I, I don't know why it's not being read, but it hasn't been read since they've connected it. Um, but I was wondering, that was an issue back uh, last time we had many, many water main breaks and um, they were ordered to stop using it because of that. Um, and I see it's connected again this year. Now it wasn't connected last year, and the last time it was connected was the year that we were having all those many, many breaks. And um, I, but now they're using it again. And I don't recall this spring. I guess this um, this April they they sent a uh, a five thousand dollar deposit to the village, but I don't. Rec and they apparently started using it in May, um, but. I don't recall the, the board approving a, an additional connection to an, a, a non-regular user this year for this year, even though they did send a deposit and request to, to, to utilize it. Um, so I, I was wondering if that could possibly be the cause or, or a, a another cause to the problem like it did before? No, Jim, they called me well in advance. And after speaking with your people in the history of what happened in reality back then, yeah, in those breaks, when I was on the outside and they called me for advice when uh -huh. I was summer retired, that is not why you had breaks. And the people at Hanson called me and I consulted with all my people, including Chris Serma and Scott Marsh and so forth. That was done properly. They they hooked up to the hydrators we requested. They put the back flow preventer in. We have a meter there that Ron Syracuse is going to read at the end of their season. Okay. They don't need to read it every month because it's a short duration use. Uh -huh. And the volume they use is inconsequential to the task on the plant's capacity. Mm -hmm. um, more damaging than something like that, like a constant user, that's something the village never required a resolution from what I've heard for permission to hook up. But more importantly to know is that is not a problem as opposed to people flushing hydrants or hooking up to hydrants in a fire emergency without giving us consultation. If we have prior knowledge ahead of time, we can handle any of that. It's just communication is worth a million percent. Yes. Okay, I'd like to go back to Sean, though. Uh, there were some expenses here for some, uh, uh, I don't know if they were change orders or what they were, Sean, exactly, but um, there were some questions you had on financing and how we, uh, how those were being paid for and if the funding was already there. And if Alyssa, once uh, Sean gets done, if you could uh, um, state how that was handled and so forth. So you guys discussed that earlier today. Will do. Okay. So what happened, um, Voland is our, the contractor we're using to uh, replace or repair the screw pumps. The, uh, we had uh, two purchase orders last year on last year's fiscal year that covered the majority of that work and the money. How, 
However, there is the emergency repair that was done in December that needs to be paid for. And that that's under emergency funding. I don't know how that works. I hope, you know, that was under the that last administration and, and under uh, Jim Sedota. And the repair on the screw pump, the they had to pull an old bearing, a top bearing off the screw. They had to realign the screw and put a new bearing on it. And that incurred more money. Um, so I was wondering if we add on to the purchase order that was originally okayed for that work. So, and I sat down with Ar Arlissa and we talked about it. I think and, um, yeah, but I have to get second place. I'm not sure where all the funding can come from. She, she might be able to, uh, move, yeah, do some work and, and move something around to to help take care of the cost. But I told Bowen that I would try to get them paid off to date because they're just about finished with that job and they're almost done. They, like I said, they just, all they have to do is do the electrical connection and then test run the pump when it's, when it's safe to run. I think that sounds good. Or let's, I, I spoke to you earlier, if you could explain to the board, uh, the, how the financing was earlier, but, uh, our past, uh, and what you are, what you're working on right now. So the total bill for Voland is almost sixty thousand dollars. I'm going to, based on speaking with the auditors about the capital fund, um, funds can be carried over in only the capital fund based on if they were not used. So I'm going to go through and see what hasn't been used in the sewer plant to take care of the $60,000 that was already previously okayed. How much over is that, Alyssa? Uh, Sean was saying there's there's an upcharge. Was that? The only upcharge was was 50, it was about 51.78 was the upcharge. So that wasn't a big okay. upcharge. That's easy to cover. Yeah. Or Alyssa, these uh, costs were already included in the capital fund approved last year. They were not spent, and you will try to see uh, if those funds are still there and to be used, correct? Correct. Any questions from the board on that? 5178 is that 5178 or 51,078? I'm sorry, 5,178. The total is 59,980 for the whole thing. That was approved already, though? Yes. Last year. Okay. Last year's budget. Yeah. So the likelihood is, or list of that money is available? Correct. Okay. I just have to verify. Okay. Yes, we just wanted to make sure the board understood that that funding was there and approved last year. Yes. And we just verify that. So thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, Sean. Any other questions for Sean or Alyssa before I let Sean go? Thank you, Sean. Right, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa, and the board. Thank you. Ready. Move forward on our workshop uh, to review resolutions. Resolution approving, awarding the RFQ the article nine energy study and that was awarded to we're going to award that to siemens are there any comments or questions on that okay move forward resolution approving m and bank easement to provide handicap access is there any comments or questions on that resolution Number three, resolution to approve Darwin Barker landscaping request. Any questions or comments on that? I had a question about, I don't know if it's related to this particular resolution, but um, the library, the email that we got just recently, um, and the library's, I don't know, portion of... Uh, the audit that they were asking for audit material. Um, who owns the building? Who owns the actual building of Barker Library? The village does. The village. We, 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 lease, we lease it to them. 
information. Okay. All right. So I was concerned about their response to our auditor's request for information. We don't have the right to ask about some of that information. That's a legal question. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, just like, it's like me asking a tenant right. or Roger asking a tenant for their income verification. I mean, it's. But I they would, also get money from us. So there True. is some responsibility. They get money from us and from the town. Right. So they have some responsibility to report to us, correct? We budgeted 55000 this year. So there, I right. think there's some kind of... Erlissa? Not just a general yes. Thing. Has Dresher Malecki received the information that they wanted or requested from the library? The last I, As of last week, no. But I was speaking with Jared, who is from Director Malecki, and he said that they may not need that. Okay, so they they may determine that they are not... But in previous years, it was on ours. Yes. And what does that mean if they come off of it? Really, it just stated... It didn't state much. It didn't give us much information, so it really wouldn't affect us at all. Okay. All right. Any other questions on that? I'm just curious okay. as to their unwillingness to share that information when they get funding from both municipalities and they lease from us. I understand the leasing thing, but the funding thing is a different story. Well, I mean, we can still access their budget, right? Yeah, we were asking for more yeah. detailed. Yeah. So. Uh, Attorney Guard, is there anything you could share on that, or is there nothing more other than uh, Alyssa and the auditors are requesting that? Uh, I'm not sure what the auditors are requesting, but they sound like for the moment they've got it taken care of. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Okay. Board resolution approving change order 2A 1 from Candy Corp Company. That's the 50. Original one are $55,093 that we tabled from last board meeting. Is there any more questions or comments on that resolution? Yeah, I'm, I'm still, I still have the same question um, as before. I see it at the other quest, the request is for the amount of, for the, the materials and work that were, that was done um, as a, in addition to what was originally contracted, but the, change order itself also includes um, an, ad, an additional request for um, uh, added 150 day um, delay to to work that was supposed to be done. And so if we're proving that 2A-1 a uh, change order, um, it would have to, that's in, including that. And, and and that's, I don't agree that that, that should be done. If you want to, the, Resolution, or if the change order read, actually, if the change order itself read, read for just the amount of money for the materials and work that was done, then I would would be okay with that, but it doesn't. It also includes something else, to the a change to, to the original contract. Attorney Guard, uh, we've been in contact, or we've been going over this actually quite in intensively here the past few days. Uh, could you address uh, Trustee Linden, please? Uh, Trustee Linden, basically, um, there's going to be a real difficulty right now uh, with the COVID and with the delays in materials and the, the other delays we've experienced in holding anybody uh, to the original timelines, you know, the pre-2020 timelines that were in their contract. So I would say that under the circumstances, it's a reasonable request. Uh, I don't know how much we want to fight them on it just because I don't think that we have much ground to stand on with them. And if I may also remind everybody that that was something during the boil water order, and Chris, chime in anytime you want. Paul Snyder heartily recommended that to you, me, the mayor. I think Roger Pecos was up there that day that since we were already doing this project and those two filter beds, 
the extra two filter beds, which had been done three years ago. The Board of Health thought that we'd be better to do them all while we, were, we had a contractor mobilized, and it would mitigate any potential for future uh, extension of the boil water order. Well, the health department wouldn't have been involved if, if, if um, the, the project would have um, ensued at, in a timely fashion, so in my opinion, and um, from, what I, from all the documents that I've read. So, um, you know, it is what the board feels, I guess. Uh, yeah. Chris Sherma, uh, could you enlighten us on the timeline? I, from the timelines that I have saw from... Uh, Brian and Gear or Rambo now, every the replacement of the first two uh, filter beds were absolutely on time, on the correct time frame. Uh, the only thing that was delayed and had delays to it, as far as I know, and Tony you may be able to help out as well after Chris chimed in, is the pumping station, which was needed to be in service so that we could replace a clarifier because when you replace a clarifier, that takes down half of your uh, uh, production of water where the filter beds did not. So it just so happened that we had a boil water order a few days before the actual schedule of the filter beds. Is that correct, Chris? Chris, if you're on, you're still muted. If you could. Uh... I think he was told to me. Could... Oh, that wasn't it. That was, that was Sean. Never mind. That was Sean. He's not really familiar how to do this. Hello? Okay, Chris is on. Hey, yeah, you got me now. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, yeah, I, I uh, understand the concerns there. We, uh, Rambo wasn't, uh, they, Rambo and Candy actually had the filter beds scheduled for the correct time, but I think what's, I think what's missing here is that we actually went to four filter beds instead of the two. Is that what? I mean, no, I understand we went to four instead of two. Yeah. But originally, the, the contract was never to, to do four. Right. And, and the only reason we ended up doing four is because of a water emergency that happened um, in September prior to the, 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 any, any work starting. And when, the, when there, was, there was a substantial amount of work that was supposed to be performed, that if the contract st started in um, in February, why would you wait till September to start doing a, a substantial amount of work that, that that doesn't appear that there's any way that they could have completed um, by the end of the year? And if it was, I don't know why we're not doing it now. I mean, and uh, the, I mean, you're claiming a holdup of of doing two filter two additional filter beds, which only took up about a week to do two additional filter beds, anyhow. Um, and if you're, so, the, the substantial portion of the project could have been started if, even if they did start it in September, which was the clarifiers. The filter beds could have been done early in the season, preventing any issues. The the, the, the filter beds should have been done when the when prior to the LJ season. They know that. They know when, when all this stuff happens. This is not unusual. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm finding that there seems to be a lot of excuses of why it was, the contract wasn't initiated for performance. The performance wasn't actually initiated till September of, of the year when they had 335 days to complete. I mean, they had the material ordered. They had, the media was on site early in the year, back in March. And, uh, but it, no performance was done, and that didn't require the the scrubber heads to, uh, piping to be changed because they changed the the two of the, the the scrubbers were changed before the filter were done this time around too. Because I went up there and checked it out, they hadn't done the they did the the, the piping prior to the um, the media being changed on those two filter beds. So those those two could have been done one at a time in the springtime when we had high quality raw water, as Chris stated in his, in his emails. They had, uh, the, there was a period of time in the spring when, when the water, raw water was in, in, in incredibly good condition prior to any LJ. And then the, you would have had four beds working, probably wouldn't have had any problem handling the LJ. Health department wouldn't have been involved. We wouldn't have had the, gone through the stress of the community being without water, 
They could have started their, their other, the main part of the project on time in September, and none of this would have been happening. So I just find that there seems to be a lot of excuses and of trying to get a, around the honoring the contract, which seems to be a, a thing in Fredonia over the years is it's, it's Fredonia time. Yeah, everybody operates on Fredonia time. You don't worry about it. We, you can get to it when you get to it. It doesn't matter. So, hey, yo. you know, and I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it, you got, it's, it states here that we're, that, um, Trustee Linden, I think you made it are, quite clear here, unless there's something more actually you're going to be saying here, I'd like to have Chris Serma, uh, um, well, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I guess I'm still confused about what Mr. Lynette, I have a feeling everybody is. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Did there's we, a contract. The contract that? is what it is, and, it, and they're right on time with the filter beds right now. They're done. All four of them are done. And that's, that was scheduled, and you folks yeah, all saw the, the schedule the, and all the O'Brien okay, well, stuff well, in the school. Well, the question here is, is, is pertaining to the resolution, and the resolution pertains yeah. to the change order 2A-1, two, two and in 2A-1, um, the, the contract they're asking for the contract to be modified um, by adding that's 100, add, 150 days. Add. 150 days to the to the timeline, and that's yeah. and that's um, that doesn't state that in the in the in the resolution. The resolution is only for the payment of the next two portions, next two paragraphs of the the for the filter media and um, the labor. So right. th that's what the resolution is for. The resolution isn't isn't about the additional timeline. It's that they're throwing that in on the. So if you agree to this. Resolution, you're also agreeing to the extension of the timeline. Yeah, that's so. That's what I'm saying. That's, so I, I, that's why I'm having a hard time with this resolution. Attorney Gard, Attorney Gard, you address Trustee Linden on this. So that's why it's not in the resolution. The resolution, really, especially this one, uh, does not have any specific legal requirements other than to identify what action the board is contemplating and to give them the opportunity to say yay or nay. The resolution itself uh, does list the change order number. Mm -hmm. It does list the amount of the dollars, which is important anytime we spend public sure. money. The resolution itself uh, is, a, or, sorry, the uh, change order itself has been made part of the resolution uh, by having it attached. And if you read the resolution, you'll see the attached change order. Uh, so that's the best way I could do that rather than just copying and pasting the entire change order into the resolution. I guess what that, I'm missing I, is I, that... I, I, I hate to say it, but I feel like we're going to run around yes. on this. Well, then I think we just have to vote. I, I, I guess... I guys, trust, tr order, please. Uh, Chris Sermon, go ahead. <laughs> if I could, order. thanks. Trustee we're, Linden, we're I, I guess what I'm confused about is this this extra money here is for the two additional filter beds. Right. And I, I get that part. Mm -hmm. And that was all brought upon with the uh, with the whole uh, scene this summer. That's right. But at the same time, the thing that was postponed and is still not completed is the Vineyard Drive pumping station. So without that Vineyard Drive pumping station, we cannot do the reactors, which is the extension of the timeline here is, I believe, for that then. Is that, is that what, Tony, am I correct there with that? Correct. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And Jim, I totally agree with you. There's so many things with this whole project that Chris and I and Jerry Falco struggle with. Um, not to throw anybody under the bus. And Jim, I'm sick of excuses too, because I have this conversation every day yeah, well. with all people involved. I think that when this whole design was set up, and put forth, engineered, and bids went out, and all that prior to me coming back, and then after that, there was a lot missed that should have been included in the thought process. Like the simple things, like even if we were on a timeline, Jim, and didn't do these two clarifiers, the extra ones, to do a reactor changeover in the middle of winter, those two clarifiers that need to be done, the engineer's ambitious thought that we could tear that building half apart to rip them out yeah, without Vineyard Drive pump station completed, expose that plant to winter weather up there, 
with no heat concerns, not to mention I could not have gotten salt trucks or plow trucks down there all winter, which in a normal day is treacherous and hazardous. Um, so I'm telling you, this is not something any of us would have done in design if we were incorporated in design or thought. We walked into this, we're handling it, and the timeline extension, Jim, to your very well-raised point is questionable, but it's now necessary because you can't expose the plant to all of those things I just outlined and still have a pump station that's not operational yet to supply water while that crucial changeover takes out 50% of his plant. Well, I, I also have uh, um, the res reservations on, on why it's taken so darn long to repair a pump station um, that many months to, to just make the changes and replacement and repairs to a pump station under the guidelines of the contract for that, f that was required for that. Now we're asked to add um, additional costs onto the pump station and, and a f further timeline for, for adding those new, new uh, additions to it. Um, maybe that's extending the timeline on when it needed to be done. But it seems also seem to, seems to me that, I mean, like I said, at some point, you got to start addressing engineering and contracting uh, contractors who agree to contracts. I mean, if they're saying that they, they shouldn't be doing it in the wintertime, why did they propose to do it so late in the season? I mean, if they got to if they got to open up the building and there's two 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 uh, clarifiers to be done, they should have known that it, there's there's penalties in place for for people that that, that uh, agree to do a job, and it's and I. Right. At some point, when, when do we start holding people accountable for what they're supposed to be doing for the village? These are essential services. And I'm not saying it's you, Tony, it's not. It's, it, what I'm saying is, is there's, um, you know, get people to do things the way they're supposed to. And if you start holding them accountable, at some point, they will start doing it. Jim, so, I agree with you heartily. Why was I the one six weeks ago they noticed that when they were doing the design for pump, the pump station, there were no of these VFDs originally included in the design. Right. We have VFDs and aquavar units at the Webster Road pump station. Yep. You would have thought that would have been common sense to put them in the vineyard drive station. Right. Exactly. Every pump station in Dunker we're, has them. We're Basically, again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to the engineers, it seems to all of us on the team that's trying to get this village protected, Right. they just tried to design this project based on what was there. Well, that's not the way you do it. Exactly. And now we're dealing with all these subsequent issues. Right. And, then, and, and, and that's my point, Tony. And, and, and a, the idea here is, is, to, they, is to get things done properly all the time in the first place. And if you don't put your foot down at some point, they're always going to walk over you and always keep adding four additions to the projects. Always, it seems we've been doing this for a long time. Every time we get a, um, a project for anything, we're always having these add-ons. Or there's there's always every single time. Well, so it's what almost. Do you propose? I say we start holding people accountable. Okay, but do you that, want to pass the resolution or not? Do I? No, not as it sits. Okay. Uh, Trustee Linden, if I might, don't get me wrong. Uh, I've traditionally been the guy that makes the phone calls and writes the nasty grams to contracts and engineers in the village. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, at this time, this with this project and how much it's changed and how complicated it's become, not that I agree with it, but fairly from a legal perspective, you need to realize that this pretty much for 2020 uh, across the board with this type of contract, we're going to have difficulty making a stand on this one at this time. That's all I'm saying. Because of COVID. Well, I say, I, I've, you say, you know, people are saying because of COVID and they want to blame COVID for everything. But I don't, I don't believe that there was any essential services that, the, that our governor um, stated that um, could not be repaired, replaced, or, or held back on in order to... Um, in order to make sure that we have safe water or say safe safe police or safe fire 
these are essential services that, that had to be maintained. I don't think, I don't believe that there was any um, <coughs> statement said that they couldn't do, initiate work. So, um, I mean, I, you, it, it, it could fall down to bed. You might, you, you might be right. People might not uh, agree with me, but, um, uh, but I don't, I mean, could pro probably, I'll, probably yes or probably no, all you want. And, but uh, this is how I feel. Um, these were essential services, and I, f I feel that it's... it's we're Trustee Linden, I don't think anybody disagrees with you. I think we all agree with you. I think oh. we're at like 98% of, uh, of the project is, is done right now, and it's kind of hard to hold somebody accountable. Actually, 98% of the project isn't done. You've got... The, well, you, okay, Trustee Linden, please don't it's not. Me. I haven't interrupted you. You are interrupting me. The, the, the project is getting close to being done. That's uh, these these things. Uh, the engineering of it was done a long time ago. I understand your ago. frustrations. I think everybody agrees with you. Everybody does agree with you. Lots of projects <laughs> change have, and have changed. Not only this one, but other ones as well. You're absolutely right. Our uh, our uh, uh, opera house project here we has some funding issues. That project got pushed back like three weeks. Okay. Things happen. I understand that. You're absolutely right. The question is, why were these delays done in the beginning and, and throughout the whole uh, process is, is a very good question. Well, but I guess, you know, Doug, it's it's one thing when, such as the Opera House it might get delayed a few weeks because of something. Um, but when you had talking something like water and and you and we ask people to have to boil water for, for weeks on end, and you have to spend have ex excess spending of over twenty nine thousand dollars to buy water for people. I and mean, if people put that, this is this is not just a minor setback. This was a major issue, and I'm 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 I find it hard to believe that people are so cavalier about the idea that they can't hold somebody to a damn contract when um, they put such an imposition on the people of Fredonia. And now they're going to have to come up and, and, and spend more money. At some point, this is going to cause an um, a increase, a increase in um, costs. So um, you guys can feel what you want, but that's where I am, I'm at on it. Thank you. Okay, do any other trustees have any other um, what would the rest of the board like to do on this? I've heard from Trustee Linden here for quite some time. I'd like to hear from somebody else, please. If we don't pass this resolution, is the work not going to be done? Sorry. Okay, then. I believe, I believe, most of it's been done. Is it for the additional cost of the two filter beds that are already finished? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. So then we're just I mean, voting to, to pay them. To go back to. Yes. I'm okay. sorry. Go ahead. I, so we're just voting to pay them. Is basically what we're doing. According to. Well. According to. to right. both, and then, but Jim is right. There's also that extension in there. So right. that's. I get the two points. What, what I can do for Trustee Linden is, uh, what I will do is, is address the uh, engineer, the head engineer on this project, and ask her simply all of your questions. Why, why, why? The cavalierness, the whole thing. I'll ask her. Let's get a description from her of what happened. And if we want, we should have maybe done that a long time ago, right? I mean, is that what you need from us? A, a, yes, that would be fine. Thank you, Chris. That would be absolutely what we need to do. Chris, right from her, yeah. Chris, how far over the uh, timeline are we? Um, well, the uh, Vineyard Drive pump station, uh, if Tony, you can correct me, I know that was May or June, I believe, that was supposed to That's be one, done. Right? And then uh, that would, then the rest of the project would proceed because we'd have, um, what, if in case we had water issues, we'd have a little bit more supply. And um, I've heard different reasons, blaming the COVID and supply parts and suppliers and whatever. What, what and was the timeline on the filters at, at your place? That was, that was right on schedule, actually. Okay. Those, the only thing that was on schedule was to do those filters. And I think that was August, the middle of August, we started those two. And, that and then was, we had our issue. And that was, right? that, that was I, if, uh, just one, one to clarify that. Is yeah. that when they decided to have their meetings to de to determine the timeline of when work was going to happen? The, the the initial contract was initiate to initiate work was February February 24th. 
Exactly. Right. And, and there, I don't know when the first meeting happened, but they claimed that there was, there was the first meeting didn't produce anything. There was there was no minutes or comments. And so whether it happened or not, I don't know. The, the, the actual next meeting to determine a timeline was um, happened in August, the end of August. And, and so then they set the, t then, then they set the dates in order to um, initiate the, the work. And that, they determined that to start in September. So, so they planned on getting all of this work done from September till the end of the year. Um, and they're saying that just because of, of adding two filter beds, adding two filter beds to that is gonna now prevent them <coughs> from getting all the everything else done. So I... It's not what they're saying. No. It's not what they're saying. No. We're, de we're delaying replacing the clarifiers because we don't want to open up a building in right. November. Right. right. And, and we they, also don't they, have the water. If we have the emergency situation, we right. don't have I, the supply. I, Yep. And it wasn't that there wasn't work going on. We were doing the work on the clear well and all that leading up to that. There was other work happening before they got into the filter beds. Trustee Bashaw, yes. if I may, so going back to your original question. Yes. It is a great question. When Mayor Landis was still in and we had our first pre-construction meeting, Chris, if you remember, we made it empirical, empirically clear to uh, O'Brien and Gear that nothing that would impact the plant as far as what they could do as far as uh, clarifying water could happen without the vineyard drive pump station being done first. And then they agreed to that and the contracts were let and the, two filter, the first two filter beds being changed out while the Webster Road tanks pump station was being upgraded at the same time as the Vineyard Drive pump station being upgraded. It was supposed to be meshed, but all of that was That's what I said. had to be done before we had to get water from Dunker. Gotcha. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. And right. that right. fell apart. And it's not our fault, it's not the village's fault, but the engineers knew that. And the contractors developed a timeline based on what they were told they had to do. Mm -hmm. Things fell apart for a lot of reasons, but there's no way we can get water from Dunkirk right now sufficient enough to supply us without that pump station even for short term. And so, to, not to change the subject, but the next resolution then for Alstrom Schaefer has, I'm sorry? It's, it's similar. Has to do with the pump station and the part, right, that been delayed for delivery? No, we're adding no. that. Oh, you're adding it. It's coming the 26th of October? Or shipping? Those out. are the parts that I mentioned earlier, Trustee Bashaw. The variable frequency drive units right. to control those pumps automatically instead of people going down there and cranking valves manually right. on the line from Dunkirk to Fredonia to feed Fredonia. That's, that is the worst case scenario. You don't want someone or like Scott Marsh going down there. And adjusting it, and somebody else going down there and trying to adjust it. Right. Once the volume of water we accept from Dunkirk is established between the two municipalities, so that we don't imperil the vineyard drive businesses, especially now more than ever, the dialysis unit, the variable frequency drive units will be set at a setting that will ramp up the pump slowly when we call for water from Dunkirk and then limit the amount of water we take from them and without hammering our water system. So Tony, let me ask you this. Uh, Pardon me? I'm sorry to interrupt. Why wasn't that part of the original project then with Alstrom Schaefer um, at the pump station? Why wasn't that, why is that an add-on? Yeah, why fine. wasn't that mm -hmm. included because in the original project? Because, Trustee Bashaw, this whole project 
was designed before I got back here to Fredonia. Mm -hmm. um, it's very frustrating for me. These are things that should have been considered prior to final engineering design before it went to bid. So now we're trying to pick up the things. And these are the things I noticed with Chris Serma and Jerry Spalco and even the contractor. And we raised this to the attention of the engineers six weeks ago. They were they just designed it to replace what was there. Yeah, okay. didn't they tell us, Tony, that they designed it based on the size of the pipes and that and didn't know there was a contract limiting the uh, flow? Yeah. I That's believe. absolutely correct, Roger. And Randy Woodbury, Mayor Rosas, Rob Curry, who runs water maintenance for the city that I used to work with, you know, all the guys in Dunford, all of us together have known this for years. Tony, it should have been that. included in the thought process prior to me coming back or anybody else. So, Tony, there, that contract we have within the limit set, so I think it's to 520 gallons a minute. Is, is that all they're still capable of? supplying us or have they upgraded vineyard drive to be able to increase it at some point if we wanted to part of the upgrade to the project was we went from the 12 inch line from dunkirk on main street extension from the main street extension booster station in dunkirk it used to be fed through a commonly shared eight inch water line to vineyard drive and into our pump station O'Brien and Gear, rightfully, we tapped into the 12 from Dunker and then ran that 12 inch feed into our pump station. So we would now be separated from that eight inch feed that feeds Vineyard Drive. Okay. All right. So okay. what we take from Dunker is on a dedicated line to our pump station. The Vineyard Drive businesses are on their own dedicated the old eight inch line. Here's the thing, there's an agreement with the city of Dunkirk in the village that limits us, Roger, to five or 525 GPM mm -hmm. um, based on what used to be. Now, the village should be happy that Dunkirk is taking upon itself, and Jerry Falco and I initiated this while I was still there. We upgraded our Main Street booster station to uh, provide more pumpage from Dunkirk, and then things fell apart for a few years, but Randy Woodbury and the Mayor Rosas have done a great job of finishing that upgrade. Now they can theoretically give us more water now that we've separated the two feeds. The dedicated line to our uh, pump station for Fredonian emergency and still maintain vineyard drive pumpage for the businesses, but this whole thing with the startup and the test, which I'm gonna have my guys there and Dunkirk's gonna have their people there. It's gonna be a shared effort uh -huh. with Chris and his people too. We have to test how much we can take now on, now that we're on a dedicated line without affecting Dunkirk. Once we find that maximum, it might exceed the current agreement of 525 then you set those VFDs, Trusty Bashaw. Yep. The control, no one can go in there and mess with it. You set those and the computer takes over. It's all pressure related. Good. So, so then at that point, if we found out they could actually supply us with more than 525, we could look to maybe uh, signing the new agreement, stating so, stating the new amount. But we, you'd, have to, you'd have to do the test first. Is that what you're saying, Tony? Absolutely. Startup, training, co-training, test, and then the board and the council of the city might have to do an amendment to the uh, current agreement. That's all, very simple. But you can't do it without us knowing how we don't blow up our lines by taking too much, mm -hmm. or we don't starve their lines by taking too little. And, okay. for, and um, the, timeline, the timeline to put this new, um, variable frequency drive in um when is that anticipated to be done if they this, if this is agreed got upon. the alstrom shaper sent emails to chris and all of us involved in the project and jerry the delivery date is scheduled for october 28th from the vendor 
and then there's going to be probably two or three day ship date to get them there. Uh, O'Brien and Gear estimates probable potential early start up early or mid November. And it takes about how long to install? Well, once we get them here, that's what I'm saying, a week or two. Oh, a week at the or most. two. So, so you, that, that, that itself would more than likely be done before the original contract date was even ended anyhow. So that, that would be complete before, before um, January anyhow. Again, yes, again. that should be done before the original contract date. And Jim, Correct. once mm -hmm. again, I share your concern. Chris, we all do. We're all on the same team here. No, I, you, I, I understand that. We got to get that done before you can open up the building to do the clarifiers and then you're in winter you can't do it in the winter yeah i think we need i think we need to move forward with this yeah the, what we need the lesson here is that we need to be more careful with signing contracts well, I mean, and trust, getting engineering you, you studies. trust your engineers right no, yeah. nobody on this board that could have said we should have right. dfts on the board. right that's right uh, exactly. you know yeah. even if they had included it we'd still be paying it we still would have been paying for them right so it's not like it's a total all right. are, are we Excellent. able to move on? Yeah. Well, and I, we yeah. We've got other things we've I got think it. the lesson is about the engineers. I think we need to all keep that in the back of yeah. our minds. The only, the only other, one other quick question. I, I'm just concerned regarding the change order number of 281 doesn't match the bill or the invoice that they had given us. It just shows a change order. <laughs> it's a typo, basically. So I don't know who reviewed this. Uh, I don't know if our attorney reviews these. Tony, did you look at this? Chris, did you look at this? Did you notice this typo on here or not? No, I don't look at them. It usually goes to the clerk and uh, village attorney first okay. and the engineers. So, no, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, the change order number is 2A-1, but in the total it says change order for 2B-1 for 55000 Then if you take 2B over here, it's only... On page 2 it is. It's, it's yeah. 2B-01, but, but page 1 is 2B-1. Right. The top of the page is 2A1, then it says, but then it says 2B1. Right. So it's just, yeah. there's just a bunch of typos in here. Um, right. I believe, Trustee Britz, that the, um, it's, it's referring to different change orders, I believe. Uh, the, the change orders the engineers sent over, um, there, were, there were several. There were several different versions. Uh, there was a mixture of things that had been already previously approved by the board and things that needed to be approved. So when I when I spoke to them on the phone, um, my understanding was that there were two outstanding change orders, and those are the resolutions that I did for this evening. Those uh, change order numbers in the resolutions are correct. Uh, I'm not sure what you guys got for backup documentation. I, I asked the clerk to provide um, the copies that I was going off of, so I'm assuming she did. Again, yes. it, again, it does say change. This is for the resolution 2A-1, but there's a typo in that change order at the total where it says this is for change order 2B-1. Like I said, it's just it's a typo, I understand, but it doesn't affect the resolution. Mm -hmm. Thank you, though, Roger, for catching that. Hey, super. Thank you, trustees. Thank you. Resolution approving auctioning of furniture no longer needed for Village of Fredonia. Comments or any questions? I gave Ann all that information to get us uh, filled in so that we could get online. Um, I, I think what I see here is copies of that contract for you guys to review. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, Ann are we still able, Tony, to move that stuff down to... Uh, the garage temporarily so we can sell it as a group from there. Uh, I'm just looking and trying to see what the list is. I don't have the list of what it is. What is it exactly? It's, it's, uh, not a it's eight It's eight file cabinets, uh, two two drawer file cabinets, two office chairs, two desks, uh, three oh, desks. Oh, sure, we can handle it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Roger, for getting that situated with that system and thank you everyone resolution approving change order 2b-3 dash rev one from alstrom schaefer electric that is the bfds we've discussed that quite uh extensively 
Are you set with that as well? Yes. Okay. All right, we'll move on to new business. Does anybody have any new business? Okay, I don't have anything either. Excuse me. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know if it's new business or not, but you asked me to check into the Chamber of Commerce regarding uh, what they're going to be doing for the Halloween. Yes. We, I could put that into my report or I could use it as new business, whatever you guys want to do. Um, just to let you know, I, I did receive a letter from Michelle Joy, the president of the Fredonia Chamber. Um, this year, because of the COVID-19 crisis, has put a, lot, uh, put a lot of stress on festivals and celebrations and other various events that were held in this year. Uh, However, they would like to announce this year that they will be working with the local businesses uh, to help bring an event to the community. Uh, they are inviting, uh, we respectfully invite you to participate with us in a variety, and a, offer a, <laughs> I'm sorry, offer a very special celebration, uh, Halloween downtown Fredonia on Saturday, October 31st, 2020. Area businesses are, re are encouraged to display Halloween decorations, lighting, and anything spooky so residents, especially the children, have an opportunity to visit the establishments. In so, they uh, tied in with uh, uh, Poochies, was kind enough to donate some cardboard tubes that were cut up and used for shoots. So they have these decorative shoots at the businesses uh, so that kids can trick-or-treat throughout the village um, and have a contact, contactless trick-or-treating this year. Uh, it'll be open for typical village hours from 2 to 5 p.m. And uh, they encourage local businesses to decorate their storefronts for Halloween. So. Thank you, Roger. Okay. Thank you, Chamber. Sorry. Yeah, I'll start. Um, were we going to put the um, safe trick-or-treating guidelines on the website? Yes, I was, I was going to have our clerk put those on there, yes. Okay, great. Just some guidelines for safety. I, I the, res, the, the ones that the resident uh, provided us with, President yes. Christina? Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't want to throw a wrench in things, but uh, Anne-Marie, what you brought up from us for us just before the meeting from, I think, Mr. Manning, that quote, well, these papers that she dropped off, they seem to relate to those change orders that we just talked about. Uh, those amounts, different number yet. yes, <laughs> are even more different than what we just talked about. Did you see those two pieces of paper? Do we need to table that? I don't know. No. I'm, I'm very confused now with these. Oh, yeah. Because um, the number in the resolution is the same one it's been for the last... Yes, it, yes. Okay, so this is true. basically nothing. I don't know. Well, this is know. what came a half an hour before this the meeting. This is now what we're voting on. Correct. Well, it, well. Has, it says change order, right. It says change order 2A-1, and it talks about the vineyard uh, replacement for the, uh, it identifies those. That's the Alstrom Schaefer amount there in uh, change order 2B. Significantly different. Yes. Okay, but how are those, then why do we have, then what's this? Okay, it, uh, trustees, if you add up the, um, the the paperwork you just received this evening, the 51, 652, and the overtime labor to replace it over the weekend there of 3,441, you come up with a five, um, $55,093. That is the correct amount for change order 2-A-1. The uh, second change order for Alstrom. Schaefer. Schaefer 15,845 is reflective of what? And of the says uh, authorized change for the amount of fifteen eight forty five, which is six thousand of which will be added to the total project cost of the remaining nine thousand eight hundred forty five to give you the eight fifteen thousand eight hundred forty five dollars. That's the same. The only thing engineering services. I don't know if this in the project. That's nowhere. That's the only thing. It's yeah, not. the forty eight hundred does yeah. it. Yes, I don't know what that figure is. That was not reflective on when right. we made up when we wrote the uh, the resolutions. Absolutely right. correct. So I don't know what that comes to or why that is there. Right. But it's not in the resolution. So no. if we approve the resolution, we're not approving the $4,800, yeah. correct? I just want to That's point correct. out that these, so this is what just we just received a letter. was right. different. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, the, the 15845 is what? Is Alstrom Schaefer. It's, it's the Schaefer. resolution. It's resolution number six. But that's, is it resolution number six for 6000 
No. No, it's for 15,000, whatever. And 6,000 of it, which is yes. added to the total. Yeah. Oh, 6,000 yeah. is added to the yeah. total. Right. right. That's right. right. And yep. the rest is coming. It was just about five grand off. So it well, doesn't include that amount. Or anything. No. This is just a letter stating right. what, what they're doing. I just wondered why we got it. Was right. that the expectation? So as long as Alyssa, when she receives the invoice, knows not to pay the 4,800? Right. Correct. Exactly. Okay. Yes, you, the trustees, you received that. Uh, our clerk received that from uh, Rambo this afternoon, and I, we just thought it would just be for your information. Okay. Thanks. Hey, any, any other new business? Once, going twice. All right. Old business, comfort water and sewer rates. Uh, Trustee Christina, you weren't here last week. I went over. We had met with the town of Pomfret, the committee, uh, I'll go through like a, a history here. And originally, uh, Tom Pomfret wanted to request $4.80 per thousand, which is what the village residents pay. And it, the offer to them was six seventy-seven per thousand, which is identical to North County Water District rate. We met here this last, uh, actually, there was a meeting before this last meeting where they wanted to do 5% over $4.80 or $5.80. Four cents, and uh, previous the board agreed to 1.25 or 25 percent over the 480 or six dollars per thousand gallons. When we met with them here recently, uh, they decided to uh, they did not want to accept the 25 percent, and they upped their five percent to 10 percent over the four dollars and eighty cents per thousand to five dollars and twenty eight cents per thousand. Uh, the board was still at the 25 percent. And uh, Tom Poffert was at the 10%. So we discussed uh, where the board would like to move that offer of the 13% and uh, stay with our 25% or go somewhere in between. So I would open this up for some discussion at this point. You, you failed to mention that. Across the board. Oh, yes, they, they yes, you're right. Across the board, across the board for not only for the, the contracts that are out of date, but for all of the contracts, including and also the including the sewer contracts sure. for the be 10% over. Right. Um, so that's. Um, you're correct. Thank you for. They wouldn't, they wouldn't accept anything less, is what they said. Correct. That's correct. Thank you. For greater issues. Well, I'd like to keep them as our customers, so I think I? that we should accept their offer. I fear that if we don't, that they're going to leave, this and then we will again, be in this trouble. This is across the board. This is taking a 30-year contract. Right, I understand. That we have in place with them and rewriting it. I want you to know that just I had Heather give us a, the, 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 we just received the last billing um, payment payment for them. And she broke it down to the difference between the, 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 the one larger contract, which is the North End uh, Phase One contract, and the, all the other ones combined uh, separately, it, it, as, as, as a, those ones combined from the, separate from the North End. And the payment from the North End was 38546 and the payment from all the others is 13,837. As I, as I described before, and nobody seemed to believe me, is that those other districts represent only 26% of our revenues. So, and now if, what you're gonna find is that by accepting their terms of Reduction down to down to um, I had it broken down here someplace. Down to um, ten percent. Ten percent. Yeah, down. Yeah, down to the ten percent of what our annual usage is. You're going to lose about ninety thousand dollars a year. The mayor, I don't know how you're going to make up ninety thousand dollars. Maybe you have a suggestion. Um, but that's a ninety thousand dollar decrease on just the water. If we do that for all the contracts. Then you're going to lose sewer. Now I don't know how the people of Fredonia are going to feel about having to come up and make up that difference. You're talking profit. No, yes. This profit. this is not. That's not you're talking, just, yes, you're talking just reduction in what we and what right. we anticipate in our revenue. annual budget is. Right. From our budget is what I'm saying. And if they no. go to the North County Water District, we will have nothing. Right. You will lose less than ninety thousand dollars for those districts. 
Because they can, they're not going to go. With, they're all not, of the money if they left us. They're not. No, they're not going to. They can't leave on the on the contract we have for the phase one. But they can on the others. And they yeah. can't on the on the sewer district because they don't have with one of those either. Well. So, so, um, but on those other contracts they can. And you'll lo what are you going to lose? Twenty six percent of of our revenues, which is going to be um, about what forty thousand dollars. What do you, what is so, your proposal, Jim? What do you suggest? Well, that's the th thing. I think that they, you know, they haven't said that they wouldn't go any further. But I think that um, it's it's. Um, I think we're still in negotiation. I don't think that they they. I don't think they have a place you to go. You want to meet in the middle, fifteen? I mean, they're not no. going to go for twenty. They proposed ten. Well, you know, they they, they tried to say that they they. Um, well, see, the thing is, is their other option is the North County Water District, and and according to Dan Pegas. The North County Water District offered 677 to them, and they wanted to have that to include their debt service that they currently add on to their bill. And they thought that the reason they would go to 10% for us was that that 10% that should be good enough for us to cover our debt service and things that we have. In, you know, and I, first of all, that has that one doesn't have any ref, any it's bearing the on the other. So so. What they're what they're saying is they want that all included. Well, I think that's um, well, as he put it, draconian, that that he would offer such a at request such a very vast difference in pricing from what we originally had them at. I mean, they're to go down to what um, from eight sixteen to to five twenty eight per thousand. And on all the contracts that we, even though some aren't even up, I mean, that doesn't seem to be. Um, but they've made it clear that they don't accept your offer. Right. So but we have to come up with another offer. Yeah. That offer. When we were the only game in town, we had them over a barrel, so we yeah. could charge them eight something a gallon or a thousand. Right. We're not the only game in town, though. Well, the thing is, is that's it's not the only game in town, but but if they, yeah, the they're going to find. Yeah, they're going to want to do that. But they're going to go. To, they're going to pay six seventy seven regardless. To, right. Yeah. But to them. Yeah, for six seventy seven, the North County Water District takes over all maintenance of all those lines and all billing, and all their meters and everything else. There's a big difference there, and I think I they, think it's important that we realize. So why when we, we talk less? about well, what? are we? Why take, would we go substantially less? Because we're not going to take over their billing. We're not going to take over their building or their that meter much? reading. Well, yes, because here's the That's thing. That's a big though. jump between 10 to 25 percent. We have to look at the profit level here, though, Roger. It costs us between three dollars and three fifty. Oh dear Lord. Okay, it does. That's, Ask Chris. That, Chris gave true. me those no. figures. That's I'm not true. Agree with Jim okay, on well, this one. We Chris got... gave me those figures, so hey. we work those out. We're just discussing here, Doug. Let us do that. And I just want to order. That's all. Let's I think order. that. I think that when you look at what it costs us to create water. And even the residents of the village pay four dollars and eighty cents a thousand. I think that ten percent over that. In addition to the, in and addition to the, money the and we're making money at four dollars and eighty cents a thousand. Four eighty per per thousand. We also pay a, a meter fee. Um, that what is it? 20, 25 bucks per per meter. Yep. Um, per month or per quarter. Right. That's in addition to that. They do their meter fee. They have meters. But that's on them. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly right. That's what I'm saying. That's in addition to what they're paying. I think that, and that is profit above what it costs us. It was never intended for this commodity to make a profit. It was intended and I think to make, that, it, make it reasonable for the people of the village who own the commodity, who invested in the community to make this happen and then utilize that to, to um, keep the rates within the village at a rate that, that, the, 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 that would be beneficial to the people of the village. Right, and 10% above what we pay, I think, is a reasonable profit. I, I think that it is a reasonable profit. I think what we pay is profit. So 10% above that is certainly a reasonable profit. What you're going to do is you're going to beat the, you're going to beat the reserve fund down to nothing, and over time you're going to have su such a, a substantial increase to the to the rate payers of the village. Then uh, they're not going to be happy. I think Erlissa <laughs> is working very hard at finding the true cost of what it costs for the water and sewer. We know that we have inflated costs, and that those funds have been used in inflated purposes. For both payment in the DPW and payment I, for uh, 
for administrative costs. I too, I too spoke with Alyssa, and she she feels that this is um, that that um, what Roger and I have discussed is is actually on point. Well, she also indicates that 10% is doable, and that for this year's budget, we would break even with water and still show a $10,000 profit with sewer, <laughs> at the rates if we decrease them now. The thing is, is that we don't have to raise taxes. The threat is to raise taxes if we give them this break. That's not the case. What we need rates. to do is find an accurate, an accurate amount of money expenditures on the, in the DPW and in administrative costs that reflect where the money's being spent. I, do the, I believe we have one. I and don't it's, believe it's we budget do. I so. don't. I, and Having run the budget this year, I don't believe we're anywhere near that. And if, and if you try to split those costs out, you're going to then have to raise property taxes. I don't believe that you'll have to raise property taxes. I, I well. think that the, that the funds can be rearranged and be used accordingly to where the expenditures truly happen. How about we meet in the middle, the 15? I'm willing to counteroffer it. That's why we're here to discuss it. I mean, it, this is called negotiations. Yeah. I wouldn't go about I think, 12. I think giving them a decent, I mean, we gave, I'd be okay with we're willing to match the North County Water District, and you they guys are willing to go below that, that a little yeah. bit. I wouldn't give the house you away. You told us that they said no to the North County Water it's District, not, right? It's, it's they didn't not, say no. But it's not only, That's what you said. We've already offered them it's, six, it's, so. It's not, but we've got, like I said, it's not. The, they're not they don't want just, just the, the um, contracts that are currently out of date. But they want everything. They right, want everything. I yeah. That. Well, I think that if we negotiate an amount, it should be for all contracts. Why hang it up so that it's on the high well, end for the next however many years, and um, you've got different rates for different contracts? I agree that we should write them all and have them start again, and I think we should start them for five-year terms, and not this thirty-year mm -hmm. stuff. When would these take effect? They have to have a thirty-year one in place in order to because that's how their their financing was set set with the village or, or set. In order to do their their project, they had to have a thirty year contract with the village. That was the yeah, requirement. That was, that was a requirement. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm this not is sure a thirty year anymore. contract. <laughs> this is a thirty year contract that yeah. was under a requirement. They agreed to it, and and the village agreed to it as a requirement. And that's what that's one of the reasons that the the rate was set as what it was. I mean, it's 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 one point seven over. Matter of fact, interestingly. Um, other communities charge us higher rates for for regular use. Um, you know, with, with, like what Dunkirk charges us if we were to use regularly, not not for emergency use, but for regular use. And matter of fact, the North County Water District, if you saw the contract that they were proposing, initially, if, if it was regular use, use it was going to be 1.75 times their rate, at one that which is 167 or uh, 667. It's what we it's what we charge prompt for. That's why it was that. And so then no, they, they came back them. with the 1% or the 10%, but the original offer why, was exactly they... what we charged pound for it, and that's why it was written that way. And now they've reduced it. Well, if I may interject, Mayor and Board, please, just to give you some <laughs> insight. The, the ratio chart you're quoting for what the district charges users is the flat rate. There's also O and M charges, operation and management charges, that uh, put that rate somewhat higher. And just a thought: no. if you want to negotiate with Pomfret, which is fine, True. if you want to, if they want to decrease, and I don't think they should get a huge decrease personally, but I'm not on the negotiating team. If we're going to build a new two million a gallon tank. And they're gonna they're gonna benefit from that, so we don't have boil water orders and all. They could be a, a partial contributory uh, uh, payer to that cost, based on the percentage of water they take every day out of our system. We That's don't have, basic business. We don't Just have a thought. We, thank you. Well, we don't have a, a, an additional charges. We they we we bill them at one point seven times um, whatever the gross the number. Whatever the village, our village rate is, it's 1.7 times their, whatever the, the total amount that they send us is billed. You know, That's the, correct, yeah, but I'm okay. saying the county, the North County Water District, on top of what Dunkard sells them, the rate. Oh, the county, oh, you're, the county does that. Oh. The county, oh, yes. Right. So 
Don't yeah. go by just the flat rate that they would charge palm for it. There's charges on top of that. Yeah, so, I mean, that's 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 some of the things that they didn't even you know, discuss with us about that, that they're, they're going to have if they decide to go with them. But but we do have liabilities. That's the, that's the thing is is what what people forget is is there's um, we have requirements and and the, or there's by having these contracts there's a, a liability for us to provide emergency backup water um, and and um, the, to pr make sure that we have all these um, requirements in place um, to provide them with all this water, which you know, might mean that we have to. Um, you know, Offer them 15. Pay, pay for water tanks or water extra things. Every time they want to ex, um, uh, expand their districts, that puts a higher burden upon the village of Fredonia. There's more, there's more liabilities. So offer them 15. See if they'll meet in the middle. That's what, that's what they call mm -hmm. negotiating. I don't know. Roger, what do you think? I would say 15 if we go with five-year contracts and we go across the board with all the contracts and it's water and sewer. Yeah, across the board, absolutely. Across the board, yes. 15. Okay. Roger, are you up okay. for that? Offer it. Okay, so the, uh, there's a majority of us that say 15% right. across the board with all the contracts for both water and sewer and the contracts are five years in length. I'm sure they're listening to your conversation right now, so... I'm sure they heard it, and when okay. we go back to the table, that'll be presented to them. Okay. We have a consensus. Uh, I appreciate that. And actually, we have a meeting with them tomorrow evening. And we will propose this as well as I'm sure, like uh, Roger just said, they are probably watching us as well. So thank you. We will give them that proposal and move forward. Uh, I have one old business here, then I'll ask for any other old business. Uh, last uh, meeting, I made a proposal, and this would be absolutely in addition to the Chamber of Commerce's uh, holiday uh, uh, happening here, whatever they're doing. I have proposed also uh, a I'd call it a Halloween happening, and it could be anywhere between Friday on uh, October 30th from 4 to 6 p.m. or Saturday from 10 to 12. It was. Uh, DPW location on Eagle Street, like how we did with the water distribution using the driveways for uh, drive through for the event to disperse treat bags. And it would be for, for all your residents only. Licenses would be checked, like we've checked IDs before for our water. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because, even in addition to the Cambridge event, uh, I had a number of residents contact me directly with concerns about the safety of Halloween events with kids going to unfamiliar houses and COVID concerns. This way we can create a safe event with social distancing by having a drive-through and using gloves and masks for all the people who are helping to stop the spread of COVID and give our kids a small Halloween treat bag from the village of Fredonia. This is recognizing that this year it has been a bust for all other events in the village and we still would like to celebrate Halloween safety with our children. I kind of thought of this because the Halloween uh, parade was canceled and the happening afterwards. And actually we have had some volunteers already come forward I would like to assist making the children's bags and distribution at the drive through event. Now, the money for this children's event this year is still available in the budget under Tom's uh, budget, as other events normally have been cut due to the pandemic. Uh, like I said, the Halloween parade and the cider and donuts afterwards have also been cut. So, I just would like to suggest this as an alternative in addition to the Chambers event for those residents who hesitate to have their children trick or treat. Yet want to have the celebration for the day in a safe manner, and I would uh, entertain some thoughts and comments and questions here. Sure. Instead mm. of trick or treating, or in addition no, to trick or treating. In addition, I think he I think he wants to host uh, like a drive-through event in addition to the we, trick or treating. We don't treating. pay anything for the Halloween parades, right? I mean, that's no. But the, we, we, don't we pay for the cider there. and the donuts. We give out prizes, and we have the cider and donuts, and. The only thing that I think would make it tricky is checking people's like licenses, and that's kind of Residence. writing down their names. I mean, that's sort of like. Yeah. Well, I don't think we'd write down people's names, but I think like we did for the water distribution, for a resident of the village, uh, you know, either say where you live, or and I think a lot of people, you know, were showing their driver's license. But that was 
No, that that was purely a voluntary. We didn't we wouldn't ask people for their driver's license at that time. But uh, this is just a, a thought, a suggestion. We had a number of residents, like I said, contact me directly. I mean, We're concerned about the trick or treating going door to door, and so, so. Is there is there any way that they can pair up with the Chamber of Commerce and work with the area businesses downtown? I I don't see why not. That's a good yeah. Combine it. Yeah. Instead of you know making two separate events, right. why don't they help the chamber yeah. and help the local area businesses and do a little bit more there? I think they'd get more reaction because I, I'm not sure, but I've heard that there was going to be a trunk or treat also at one of the churches. They've here. done that in the past. Yeah. yeah. So again, it kind of confine, it kind of keeps everybody downtown for a right. couple hours. It kind of you know showcases our businesses, and um, I'm sure that local businesses would love to have some extra help and additional candy and. I don't know, suggestion? Yeah, it's combine it. Combine it. You know, if you want, Doug, if you could uh, get a hold of Michelle or if you want me to talk to Michelle and coordinate with your volunteers, we can go from there. And this, okay. is, this is strictly a volunteer situation, right? That is correct. Okay. It's not employees. People, I've had uh, <laughs> residents and, and uh, have come up and uh, wanted to volunteer. So, so residents with their children and uh, just their concerns. And we do do a donation through the park. You're going to use some of the park money to, to purchase. You don't th doesn't recreation usually do cider some and donuts. cider and donuts? We have, budget, we have a budget line for that, for the yeah. Halloween parade. Well, maybe we could use a couple of bucks, get some extra candy, Can and have them coordinate it with the chamber. Erlissa, are you there? Yes. Can we use some of the budgeted money for the Halloween parade um, to contribute towards candy? Yes. <clears throat> do we need an, an amount? Yes, absolutely. Do we need an amount set? Yeah. Well, it's whatever oh, is there. budgeted. Um, I'll yeah. have to. I was going to say I'll have to verify what okay. the budget number is, but that would be it. Okay. Okay. Well, let me let me get with the people that wanted to make this event here and see what they would like to do. Okay, and I will get back to you. Okay. Well, like I said, if you want to coordinate that with uh, with Michelle at the chamber, I'm sure she'd love to talk to you or your volunteers. Okay. Thanks. I will. Yep. Uh, any other old business? You skipped over the Class D water stipend. Oh, yep. Okay. Well, um, the Class D water stipend, we I would like to probably discuss that in executive session. Yes. Or unless there's something outside here that you guys would like to discuss. That's well, that fine. Can be, that's fine. Okay. Sorry about that. Any other old business? Hey, Tony, I don't know if this is old business or not. Um, you still on? Yeah, I'm here. Um, <clears throat> A couple of weeks ago, I, you were out sick. A couple of weeks ago, I had a couple of residents approach me regarding. It looks like some of the, there's like a washout starting to happen on the corner of Forest and Risley near that uh, natural gas pump house. Some of the some of the retaining wall had fallen down into the creek. I don't know if that's uh, a town responsibility or if that's part of their land or. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to take a ride and peek over the bank there, you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, my understanding, Roger, is it's the uh, NFG uh, property. Okay. Is there any way we can reach out to them or give them a quick call and have them coming down and take a look at that? Um, a large, couple of large chunks of concrete has fallen into the creek and it's starting to erode um, towards their pump house. Yeah, no problem. I'll call Chris Bradish. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other old business? Okay, we'll move forward real quick. We'll go to reports. A report real quick. Uh, some more accommodations were given by Assemblyman uh, Goodell and Senator Borello to our, our police and fire officers who uh, uh, Acted in bravery this and so forth this summer to Chief Maslock, Officer Tracy, and Chief Walker. Uh, earlier this week, a few days ago, I saw, went and gave a proclamation to Mamie DeJohn at Fredonia Place for celebrating her 100th birthday. 
was uh, pretty exciting. Also, I'd like to welcome a couple new businesses that have just started up, Bella Maria's Pizza, which was formerly Maria's Pizza, and also Five Loaves Bakery, which is in the uh, Mustard Seed Restaurant that just opened up recently. We'd like to welcome those businesses. I welcome them this weekend. Earlier this week, I attended the Buffalo Fire School Academy graduation. We had three new recruits that became uh, firefighter graduation uh, people here, Tyler Bayless, Tyler Kloos, and Mike Gustafson. Uh, I attended that with Chief Walker, this up in uh, Buffalo, normal or public school 95, I believe it was at. As Kara stated earlier, we had a, uh, one of our residents, uh, post uh, a trick-or-treating safety uh, sheet. I believe it was from New York State. We'll put that on our website if we could. Uh, I'll give that to you, uh, Anne-Marie. And I'd just like to make everybody aware to remind them again to continue to check out our Villages webpage. It's been updated. It's, uh, it's got a lot of links to many different things on it. And I will continue to uh, update our public on my mayor's blog our website to keep our residents up to date on current happenings. Uh, that's all I have. So we'll go to Trustee Christina. Actually, we need to call for a meeting, Doug. Yeah, we need to call for a meeting first. We need to call the meeting open, Doug. Before we do our report. You, you kind of jumped through the workshop right into your report. We need to call for the meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. I was looking, I, I had the old sheet here from our I was going off that. I apologize. You might want to take a five minute break, two minute break. Can we take a break? Take a two minute break? Yep, we can. Thank you.
Sorry, sorry about the confusion, Your Honor. Had the wrong sheet. Do you, I'd like to start our Board of Trustees meeting. Would we please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All together. A, a special meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Fredonia duly called and held on the 26th day of October 2020 at 710 p.m. via video conferencing in Fredonia, New York, and public notice of the time and place of this meeting has been given to the news media and conspicuously posted in more and more designated public locations in accordance with Section 104 of the Open Meetings Law. This portion of the meeting is for public comment. Any member of the public wishing to comment shall submit public comments by email to Fredonia Village Clerk at netsync.net, no later than 4 p.m. Monday, October 26, 2020. Such comments will be read during the public portion of the teleconference. I will ask that the comments refrain from remarks that are in poor taste, slanderous, or not germane to any action taken or contemplated by the board, and I did not receive any emails. Okay, seeing as though we did not receive any emails or close the public portion, I apologize for um, out of order. I gave my report. I will move on to the trustees. Now for their reports, Trustee Christina. I don't have anything at this time. Thank you. Trustee Linden. No reports. Thank you. Trustee Britz. Uh, just a reminder, have a safe and happy Halloween. Sorry, didn't have my mic on. Um, just want to wish everybody a safe and happy Halloween. And uh, just uh, just be safe out there. And I have no other reports tonight. Thank you, Trustee Fritz, Trustee Pecos. Uh Just that uh, Travis uh, had emailed me last week. I believe he said him and uh, Joy Keebler are gonna be in Barker Commons tomorrow. So I sent them a picture of that one sidewalk block that's heaved. Mm -hmm. um, so that they know where it's at and can take a look at it and hopefully get that corrected. That's all I have. Thank you, Trustee Pegas. Trustee Bradshaw. Yes, and uh, all I have is uh, the, the joint uh, planning board meetings took place on Wednesday and the RFPs went out uh, for a proposal of a joint comprehensive plan to six different firms and they went out Saturday. And I think you've got an email from Supervisor Pecos yeah. explaining that process. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep you posted as to the responses we get for the RFPs. So thank you very much. And that's all I have. Thank you, Trustee Bashaw. Um, Alyssa, do you have anything for the board? Not today. Ann, anything? No. Attorney Guard? Nothing, thank you, Mayor. Okay. Pony or Chris? Move on. Reports, no reports, no correspondence. We'll move on to resolutions. Whereas the Village of Fredonia issued a request for qualification, RFQ, to solicit qualification proposals for energy services for the Village of Fredonia energy performance based reduction project. And whereas the proposals were evaluated on the basis of experience and qualification of the ESCO project approach, financial terms, and ability to implement project promptly, and whereas the village found the proposal from Siemens ranked highest in these areas, therefore be it resolved, the village hereby selects Siemens for Village of Fredonia Energy performance-based reduction project. I second that. The motion is second. Is there any further discussion? Trustee Christina? Yes. Sorry, I didn't hear. Is your mic on, Trustee Christina? Yeah, yes, I said yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Trustee Linden? Aye. Trustee Britz? Aye. Trustee Pecos? Yes. Trustee Bashaw? Yes. Carried. Whereas the Fredonia branch of the MNT Bank desires a permanent easement from the village to provide handicap access to its building located at 1 East Main Street, Fredonia, 
and whereas it is in the best interest of the village residents to have the bank become handicapped accessible, and whereas the village believes that the project as proposed will enhance the beauty of the downtown area, and whereas M&T Bank has agreed to pay all associated costs, therefore be it resolved the village hereby agrees to grant M&T Bank a permanent easement to facilitate the project as proposed. A second resolution. The motion is second. Is there any further discussion? Trustee Christina? Yes. Trustee Linden? Aye. Trustee Britz? Yes. Trustee Bacus? Yes. Trustee Bashaw? Yes. Harry? Whereas the Dar Darwin R. Barker Library desires a landscaping project for the beautification of their grounds, and whereas the library is not requesting any village funding for this project, and whereas the village believes that the project will enhance the beauty of the downtown area, therefore be resolved the village hereby grants permission as required by the terms of the library's lease with the village for the library to perform this improvement project. I second the resolution. The motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Christina? Yes. Trustee Linden? Aye. Trustee Britz? Yes. Trustee Pecos? Yes. Trustee Bashaw? Yes. Buried? Whereas the village previously retained Candy Company Incorporated for the village's water system improvements, and whereas the attached change order 2A 1 in the amount of $55,093 has been requested by Candy Company Incorporated. And whereas change order 2A-1 results from an additional project work requested by the village, therefore be resolved, the mayor is hereby authorized and directed to approve a change order 2A-1 in the amount of $55,093. I second that. The motion is second. Is there any further discussion? Christina? Yes. Trustee Linden? No. Trustee Britz? Yes. Trustee Pecos? Yes. Bashaw? Yes. Motion is carried by a four to one vote. Whereas the items on the attached list are no longer considered of use to the village of Fredonia, and whereas the sale of these items would provide greater value to the village than their retention, and whereas Auctions International Inc. Have exper having experience in the sale of government assets by online auctions has offered to provide said service to the village, Therefore, be it resolved, the items on the attached list are hereby declared excess, and be it further resolved, the mayor is hereby authorized and directed to enter into a contract with Auction International, Inc. for their sale. I second the resolution. Auction and second. Further discussion? Mr. Christina? Yes. Mr. Linden? Aye. Trustee Bretz? Yes. Trustee Pecos? Yes. Bashaw? Yes. Perry? <clears throat> Whereas the village previously retained Alstrom Schaefer Electric Corp as an electrical contractor for the water system improvement project, and whereas the attached change order 2B 03 revision 1 in the amount of $15,845 has been requested by Alstrom Schaefer Electric Corporation, and whereas change order 2B 03 uh, uh, I'm sorry. Revision one results from additional project work requesting by the village. Therefore, be it resolved, the mayor is hereby authorized and directed to approve change order 2B03, um, got tongue tied here, sorry about that. Revision number one in the amount of $15,845, 6,000 of which will be added to the total project cost and the remaining $9,845 coming from the project's contingency allowance. I'll second that. The motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Trustee Christina? Yes. Trustee Linden? No. Trustee Britz? Yes. Trustee Bacus? Yes. Trustee Bashaw? Yes. Motion's carried by a four to one vote. I would uh, ask somebody uh, to make a motion and a second if we could enter into the executive session to discuss specific personnel in the Public Works Department and Village Hall. So moved. I have a second. I'll second that. Uh, Trustee Christina? Yes. Trustee Linden? Aye. Trustee Britz? Yes. Trustee Pecos? Yes. Trustee Gavin Shaw? Yes. 
And I would uh, ask that Attorney Guard be uh, there for three out of the four subjects, please. All right, thank you. We'll enter into executive session.